A few months ago, a new terminal emulator was released. It's called GhostT, or GhostTTI, I guess, and it has been a highly anticipated terminal emulator for a while, especially due to the coverage that it received from the Primagen, is that how you pronounce it, who has been using it for a while, while it was still in private beta. Ghost TTI was created by Michal Hashimoto. Michal has co-founded HashiCorps, the company behind some of the most relevant tools in the cloud native and DevOps space right now, Terraform, uh, which is one of the leading solutions for IEC. Uh, words are difficult to pronounce nowadays. And it's from, it's from this company as Vagrant, one of the most popular tools to quickly manage local development virtual machines. Mitchell has a rock solid background in software development and DevOps, which are some of the tasks that this software terminal emulator are used more often. This terminal emulator was created by someone who knows what people want out of a terminal emulator and, you know, it shows. Ghost ATI is available for Linux and Macintosh, so most of you reading this should be able to try it out right now. And the main appeal of Ghost ATI is that it's a terminal emulator that manages to get a lot of the things that you would expect done well all the time. One of the main goals behind Ghost TTI was creating a terminal emulator that feels well integrated with the system it's targeting. On Linux, it's, um, it has picked GTK for the task to feel exceptionally integrated with GNOME, sadly, but it also supports client-side decorations, so it doesn't look too out of place on KD Plasma either. When you run GhostTTI on the GNOME desktop, you will be really hard-pressed to find how it differs cosmetically from the integrated GNOME terminal. Can you guess which is which just from this screenshot? If you had a hard time telling a difference, that is the point. GhostTTI is supposed to feel like an native application on the ecosystem that it's targeting. However, this is not the tree that makes it special. It is the fact that on top of looking like your normal native terminal application, it is also blazingly fast and tremendously customizable. Right off the bat, as soon as, soon as you open the hamburger menu on the top bar, you will find an option to use a terminal inspector. This option will open a new window that contains a wealth of live updating options for the terminal. According to Michel, this feature is the equivalent of what a browser-based dev console is to web applications, but for terminal-based applications. TUI applications, which stands for Terminal User Interface, are applications with a graphical interface that, rather than running inside a regular window, run inside the terminal context. TUIs are amazing for software development workloads because they allow you to never leave the terminal and sometimes you might not even have a graphical interface running. They can also live inside a terminal tab thanks to, you know, TMUX, pain, stuff like that. While the development experience of TUI apps has been getting easier, thanks to libraries like um, Ratat UI, is that how you pronounce it, or Bubble T, that one is easy for Go, debugging them at runtime has always been a bit of a pain, and thanks to the terminal inspector, development of those tools is now much easier. As you keep navigating through the hamburger menu, one thing that uh, you will notice is that unlike the default GNOME terminal, there is no graphical settings menu to speak of here. The reason for that is that Ghost ATI is so customizable that it would have been pretty much impossible to provide a practical GUI to expose all of its uh, configuration options. You need the full expressivity of like a configuration file for that. We can already start to see why this terminal emulator is so good. Within the same terminal emulator, you get both the graphical polish and integration of a native GNOME application and a similar configure, uh, ability to configure that you would expect from Kitty on, or Alacrity. In order to configure Ghost ATI, you will need to edit its configuration file then, located in .config Ghost ATI slash config. Here you can refine the default configuration in various ways to configure the terminal emulator to your liking. The configuration format is also really easy to understand and the reference is well documented. As an example, in my own configuration file, I set the theme to my favorite uh, rose pine color scheme made the Ghost TTI title bar follow the same 
uh, color scheme and also set the cursor style to block. Set some padding around the content, made it so that new windows and tabs open in the same path and with the same font size and set a bunch of key bindings for my own convenience. If you have no intention of spending any amount of time configuring your terminal, fear not, Ghost API uses a zero configuration philosophy. The terminal is designed to ship with great defaults right outside the box and it is fully ready to go for most users without the need to add any amount of configuration. It also looks quite modern immediately with a pretty color scheme that doesn't have any excessive contrast, the amazing JetBrains mono font set and a bunch of pre-applied key bindings. If you really like your pretty colors, you're in luck. Themes are first class citizens on Ghost ATI and you will feel right at home. But before I talk about them, I do have to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is no one or like you. <laughs> in order to do all of this, I have to pay not only hosting costs and fees and taxes, but I also pay for another script writer, Luca, and a new one also that I'm gonna talk about more with more time and, you know, equipment, all of this, sadly, this currently puts uh, us as a loss of like 500 bucks a month, something like that. In order to continue making these videos, I need to break even. There's almost 100 people already supporting me amongst various platforms, Patreon people, uh, LibraPay and Ko-Fi. And I'm obviously extremely grateful to all of them as that's the only reason that I'm able to do all of this. Links are in the video description if you want to join. And finally, you can also subscribe on the website, thelibre.news. On the same website, by the way, you can read this video as a text article if you prefer reading over watching videos or hearing my pronunciation. You can also subscribe to them and receive them as new newsletters if you prefer. There's also extra content for subscribers like interviews and team meetings. Not a lot of them right now, but they're coming. So help us break even and continue doing videos if you can. Back to the video. While of course Ghost API supports installing as many third-party themes as you want or even creating your own, you are very unlikely to need to do so. The terminal ships with a wealth of color schemes that are very likely to contain your favorite one already. And you can see a preview of everything that is available running Ghost API plus list themes and just like shopping around. <laughs> when you have made up your mind, you can just use the control plus key binding to quickly open the configuration file in your terminal of choice and well, editor of choice and add the selected theme to your configuration. But what if you prefer to use a light theme during the day and switch to a dark theme during the night? That is also a supported use case. Obviously, I wouldn't be talking about it otherwise. Within the configuration file, you may very well configure the terminal to use a certain theme when the system theme is set to light mode and switch to another theme when it's set to dark. As an example, here is how you would uh, configure a terminal to use one um, cat pussin frappe during the day and switch to latte flavor at night. Uh, theme equals, oh, um, I should have put this as an image, but it's Theme equals dark colon catpusin dash frappe, comma, light uh, colon catpusin dash latte. Very professional. Another thing that sets this terminal emulator apart from the traditional ones is that the, the fact, like Kitty, that it has full support for tabs and splits. It is possible to split any view is, using tileable and resizable panels without needing to use a terminal multiplexer like Tmux. Again, this is very comfortable for complex workloads like development and DevOps, where you might want to see different terminal applications or outputs all at once. All about graphics then, GPU rendering and graphical support. Ghost ATI supports Kitty's terminal graphics, uh, graphics protocol. And this means that, yes, you heard that right, you can render full screen, uh, full resolution pictures in it. This is a really nice perk if you like using TUI applications. As an example, the Yazi file manager uses this protocol to render previews or, uh, of pictures and PDFs documents right in your terminal. How this is technically doable is even cooler, like Kitty Ghost ATI is also a GPU accelerated terminal emulator, and the terminal window is actually a hardware accelerated OpenGL context. This makes Ghost ATI the first native GTK, GTK4 terminal to not use the VTE library, making it gain a definitive advantage in performance and flexibility over 
traditional terminal emulators. If you think it's a gimmick, fair not, you will see the difference in instances where your terminal needs to render a very large amount of output at the same time while using NeoVim motions to scroll through a large document or when you will see the beautiful font ligatures being rendered as if you were using a graphical IDE. It has, doesn't end there though. One of the standout features of Ghost TTI is that it was not built as a monolith, but rather as a combination between lib Ghost TTI, the core embeddable server component that takes care of the heavy lifti lifting, and the graphical client that consumes Ghost TTI. While this feature is not complete on Linux yet, eventually it will be possible to take the base lib Ghost TTI component, the one that does the hard part, and build your own custom UI around it. Or KDE maybe. So far this has been my favorite way to make sure that every OS and desktop environment is properly supported with a build that feels native to it without causing the maintainers to have to support a gigantic number of different builds. When this work is complete, the core project will officially maintain a graphical user, uh, user interface for Macintosh, Windows and GNOME, the most popular Linux desktop environment, leaving the community around free to create as many graphical uh, interfaces around Ghost ATI as they want. As an example, the KD community could come up with a Kurigami wrapper around libgostati. The Cosmic community will create one with iced, ice, e, d, I don't know how you pronounce it, etc. These graphical clients will not be exact too difficult to maintain either. The main Ghost ATI features uh, updates will be shipped as part of the underlying library, making the maintenance work for other communities trivial. If you use GNOME, you should totally be giving Ghost ATI a try. To be completely fair, I didn't dislike it using on my other KD Plasma install based on um, but it doesn't feel as native yet. One day it will, though, the development around Lib Ghost ATI are interesting and absolutely uh, worth following. Like this channel, I don't know. <laughs> That's what YouTuber usually say at the end of the video. Um, yeah, <laughs> names are hard, n names are, are very hard to pronounce. pronounce. I hope it's Ghost ATI. I completely forgot to check how it's pronounced, but it has to be Ghost ATI, right? Ghost TTI, like that's that's how it, it makes sense to 